The human voice is a complex instrument. This is because we can modulate it. Think of the difference between a natural trumpet and a valve trumpet. But instead of buttons on a trumpet, we have resonance chambers and articulators, like the tongue, lips and teeth, to produce different vowels and consonants. L, M, N, R. Complex sounds consist of complex sound waves, which in turn consist of complex frequencies. The lowest of these frequencies is called F0, or fundamental frequency. This fundamental frequency is the same regardless of the other frequencies. Of course, different people have different fundamental frequencies. Typically, women have a higher F0 than men. So, going back to the natural and valve trumpet, they have the same F0 as long as we blow in it the same way. When it comes to the human voice, blowing the trumpet can be equated to blowing air out of your lungs, making your vocal cords vibrate like this. To do this, you use the cricothyroid muscle, which is a tensor muscle in the larynx that contributes to phonation. You can compare it to tuning a guitar string. I want to go back down. On the acoustic level, the F0 is measured in hertz, that is, vibrations per second. This is not the same as amplitude, which is measured in decibel, a level of sound pressure. Low F0 might be around 100 hertz, while a high F0 might be around 350 hertz, at least in my case. No. The perceived fundamental frequency is called pitch. Now, this is important. F0 and pitch are not the same thing. The F0 is objective, you can measure it in hertz. Pitch, on the other hand, is subjective. It's how your brain translates the vibrations that hit your eardrum. Think of music. Some people have a good ear for music, some don't. And it's sort of the same for languages, only we all have a good ear for our native language and we need a lot of training to develop an ear for other languages. In other words, different languages translate the same acoustic reality in different ways. One of the first things you will have noticed when listening to Norwegian speak is our singing accent. But why do we sound so happy when we speak? Let's find out. All human languages are melodic in the sense that they use pitch variation. Are you saying I'm not human? We use it to express emotion. I'm really happy. Ironing. I'm really happy. When you say that someone has an accent, it's usually based on pitch. You will never guess where I am from. And we also use it functionally. For instance, when we turn statements Yes, you do. When we left, you said, got the keys. Into questions. No, I didn't. I asked, got the keys? Some languages go even further and use pitch variation to distinguish words. You're probably thinking of tonal languages like Chinese. But contrary to tonal languages in which each syllable is associated with a tone, Norwegian is a pitch contour language. What does this mean? Well, it means that pitch variation is spread over several syllables, making particular patterns. In Norwegian, we have two different patterns. Mola. Mola. That's why we sound so happy. The pitch contour is always rising at the end. But why is it important? The words we just saw are an example of what we call a minimal pair. Two words that are identical except for one single feature. In this case, pitch variation. According to these studies, there are somewhere between two and four thousand of these in Norwegian. Does this mean you should memorize all of these? No. Actually, when we speak, the context will usually make it clear what you're talking about. Ronald elsket och spiser färska reker på kaja. In addition to this, 
and pitch contours are notoriously difficult to imitate, and they also change from one region to another. So, why should I care? One reason could be that you want to accomplish a native-like accent. But there are other reasons as well. First, there are some indications that pitch variation can actually interfere with what you hear, or think you're hearing. This type of confusion can in turn make communication more difficult. Pitch, together with vowel length, is the primary clue to where accents are in Norwegian. This means that getting a grasp of pitch variation is important if you want to achieve a natural flowing pronunciation and avoid staccato speech. Finally, pitch contours are the building blocks of spoken language, which is organized in accent phrases. In other words, we process natural discourse in terms of how these accent phrases are related to each other. This means that pitch is also important at the discourse level, sort of like punctuation when you're writing. Pitch variation is an important clue when it comes to guessing if someone has finished speaking or if more is on its way. Okay, so let's recap. Learning about pitch variation is not about memorizing thousands of minimal pairs, but rather to retune your brain, making it more sensitive to the particular patterns of the language you are learning in order to better understand and speak it. Are you ready?